Yeah, absolutely. Let's dive right into Camp Cretaceous. Uh, obviously, the, uh, the third season just came out. Uh, super exciting season. I'm sure you're all caught up. Uh, binge watched it in a weekend. Uh, probably the best season yet, in my opinion. Um, very exciting stuff. Um, and a lot of really cool inspiration for new products that we're going to be getting into in a moment here. Yeah, I mean, that, that was kind of the, the first discussion, right? Because we, we saw the, the concepts and everything of those dinosaur and we were like, this thing's crazy looking. It looks like nothing we've ever seen before in Jurassic. And we really want to make sure like the toy just captures that spirit while still looking like a really cool toy that a kid would want to have uh, and that a collector would want to have. And I, I think we really wanted to just kind of capitalize on those key attributes that make the dinosaur so unique in the Jurassic canon. Um, just a really cool asset to come across our desks to get to work with. It was like, wow. Yeah, I mean, it's the challenge, right? Because the design brief, if you hear from people who worked on the show, was we wanted to look ugly, look like a science experiment gone wrong. And when you're trying to make a toy, obviously you don't want it to be too ugly because nobody's going to want it. Uh, and so we're trying to just balance those things and make sure that this thing looked cool and dangerous. Uh, and like, so things like really playing up the plates on the back to give it that kind of armored, kind of almost like lizard-like look, where it almost has almost like a crustacean sort of feel almost with the overlapping plates. And then the spikes on the tail, uh, we had the story beats and everything. So we we knew what was gonna, how those were gonna fit into the plot. And we're super excited to make sure that the, those got their moment to shine. Uh, and so that was kind of where we, kind of the angle we approached this dinosaur from just starting out was, how do we make this as dangerous and as crazy as it's gonna be in the show? And the way we, Kind of thought about that was just give it more attacks like what does it have one attack no does it have two attacks well, well we have dinos that have two attacks in the line already can we push it further three attacks and i and we felt like just giving it as much ways that a kid could just play with it and like attack other dinos with it and other characters with it was like so important right from the get-go yeah that was definitely something in our minds too just trying to think about how does this thing move because uh, in the script, obviously, you see that it, it climbs trees and in the show, we get to see it do that crazy pose when it roars and all that stuff. So just trying to find like ways to kind of bring those those kind of strange animalistic movements to life, uh, I think, was part of the challenge here uh, and something we definitely had top of mind during the design process. Yeah, that, those are super fun. Um, uh, just like everyone else, we're huge fans of the human characters in Camp Cretaceous. The campers are such a key part of why the story like connects with everyone uh, and really wanted to make sure we did them justice in the toys. Um, yet the Yaz figure, I think, was a no-brainer uh, and getting to package her out with Blues, making her big appearance in the series for the first time, which is kind of crazy for people not expecting that. Um, and just trying to capitalize on, again, those like key characters um, to really give them their moment to shine in the toy line. And I, I think bringing in Yaz and uh, Kenji gets the great Monolophosaurus from the penthouse scene. Um, another really cool, just exciting scene from the show that we got to bring to life. Um, and then, yeah, Ben, I mean, what happened to that guy? Like went from the nerdy kid with the, uh, with the, the carob syrup in the first one or whatever. And now he's king of the jungle, right? We really wanted to make sure uh, that when that figure felt like Jungle Boy Ben, like he's got he's got his spear and he's ready to charge into battle with Bumpy and brag about how he defeated Toro or whatever, and <laughs> it's just really trying to capture those little little minute things that bring the characters to life and make them iconic, you know. Yeah, uh, absolutely. So Dino Escape. Uh, you know, we always kind of try to come up with uh, a theme that's going to underpin the line so as we go forward. So we kind of know we're working towards a goal. Uh, and Dino Escape just felt so natural um, with the events that we see unfold in season three. Um, we know that there's dinos kind of rampaging across the island, of course, and we don't really know why. And that's one of the central mysteries of the season. Um, but one of the other big things, obviously, is Scorpius escapes. Uh, it breaks free of its containment cell and Scorpius is loose on the island and we really wanted to kind of highlight that element that uh, chaos is such an important part of the Jurassic DNA, right? Like we wanted to make sure that 
uh, this idea of dinosaurs breaking out and breaking free really felt like just like the natural thing to do and wanted to make sure that really came across because that's so much of what happens in the season. So we wanted to take a look at the dinos and kind of find new ways to animate them. Um, in the past, we've obviously had different action features that trigger with the sounds and things like that, roars, chomps, and all the different attacks that go with it. And it was kind of like, how do we give the user more control? The kids that are playing with this, how do you have a more kind of controlled experience where the dino actually kind of does exactly what you want it to do? Um, and so we developed the slider kind of mechanism that's in there now. So basically you can control the levels of aggression or the level of attack or and even the levels of sound that go with the dino as you're playing with it. So each one of those sliders, like on Bumpy, for instance, we've got grown up Bumpy who makes her big appearance too in season three. Um, just this massive tank of a dinosaur. I wanted to kind of help bring Bumpy to life um, and give you a little bit more control using that slider. So there's the three different levels of kind of a little agitated, getting kind of a warning sound and then full on attack mode when you really jam the slider uh, with that really big sound and the really big attack. Uh, and kind of just spreading that out across all of the dinos using that same kind of mentality across all of them, uh, really found some interesting ways to get some new nuances into the play. Yeah, definitely. Um, as as you kind of alluded to earlier, this is kind of a, a an offshoot of Dino Escape, right? Like this was one of the natural progressions once we kind of decided that the season's gonna be all about dinosaurs breaking free and wreaking havoc outside of containment and outside of the lab. It was how do we bring this experience to even more dinosaurs uh, and capture gear. Uh, I mean, it's something I grew up with, with dinosaur toys, with the Kenner toys that I loved. Um, and I just feel like it's such a natural part of the Jurassic story, right? You've got dinosaurs and they're contained until they're not. And giving kids a way to play that out uh, in such a kind of meaningful, kind of physical way, just felt so natural. And I just felt like we had to do it in this line. Uh, Dino escape, you gotta escape from something. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that that was the next logical progression. Once you get to those big dinos and they have capture gear, T-Rex, I mean, that's gonna be the showstopper. That's the dino that everybody wants to see break out and break free and cause chaos. So it was, a, again, a no brainer for that one too, to just get some capture gear in there to really show off the power of the dinosaur and give those awesome play moments uh, that we really want. Um, and just finding new ways to bring the dinosaurs to life. I mean, that's kind of what it always is all about is just how do we make this play experience as exciting as possible and as new as possible for the kids and give them things that they can't experience. Um, you, you talked about the leg function um, and that's something we've always wanted to do on a T-Rex. I mean, going all the way back to Jurassic Park 1, the stomping, that iconic scene of the water jiggling around as the T-Rex is approaching. Um, it, it just seemed like we had to find a way to incorporate that. And with this T-Rex, we finally got to do it with that really awesome stomping feature. Yeah, I mean, we're all dino nerds who work on the brand. Um, we all have our lists of favorite dinos that we're just waiting to spring on the line whenever we get an opportunity. Um, so I don't think you have to worry about us ever not delivering new species, uh, even things that are a little from beyond the content, like the Carcara. Um, I think it's just an awesome opportunity whenever we get to introduce a new species like that. Uh, it really helps kind of broaden the scope and for kids' imagination too, uh, it just lets you know, like, hey, I've, I've never heard of this dinosaur. Like, let me learn about it, you know? Um, and I think it's kind of cool just to, to kind of start to understand, like, how many of these things are out there that we've discovered and that we're still learning about. Um, it's just kind of like a, a really cool kind of window into that world. Yeah, so we've got a kind of a new take on Snap Squad coming out, which is pretty exciting, actually. Um, we're gonna be introducing a new line of these figures called Snap Squad Attitudes. Um, and one of the things that we were trying to really accomplish with these dinosaur figures in this line um, was really kind of playing up the kind of emotive 
kind of parts of those dinosaurs. Uh, the the original Snap Squads are awesome, and they're just so fun. They like, dangle on your finger and they move around, and it's so goofy. And I just thought, like, how do we make them even? How do we push it even further? Um, and so with these, it was really just kind of playing into how how much more emotive they could get, what kind of crazy expressions we could put on the dinosaurs uh, to kind of give them a little bit more personality. Yeah, and that's a new species for Snap Squad just across the board, even outside of Attitudes. Um, both of those are Stegosaurus and Dimorphodon uh, are completely brand new to that form factor. So it's pretty exciting um, to get to see them in the stylized figure like that. And now with the crazy expressions. Um, I don't have any specifics I can tease for Comic-Con, but I can tease that you should absolutely be on the Mattel Creations page when Comic-Con goes down because there may be something very exciting showing up. So definitely look for that in the future. Yeah, so Mattel Creations is basically kind of a, think of it as like a sub-brand basically that kind of captures all of our more collector focused and kind of exclusive offerings across all of the brands. Um, and we've been really wanting to do a Jurassic Mattel Creations, you know, connection for a while. Um, and I think this Comic-Con item is going to be probably the first public facing uh, version of that. Uh, where people can actually get in on it and start to see what we've been working on behind the scenes with Mattel Creations.